The Maidenhead Waterways Project, introducing the baseline plan, bringing the Thames into town. Maidenhead Waterways Restoration Group is pleased to announce its first planning application. The baseline plan focuses exclusively on the town centre area, where improving the waterways is a key part of the Royal Boroughs Area Action Plan. Unlike the main River Thames, the old waterways pass directly through the town centre. The channel split at Town Moor, with York Stream and Moor Cut, which is also known as the Flood Relief Channel, following their separate ways until they rejoin at Green Lane. York Stream on the left is today a shallow, narrow stream, prone to low flow, whilst Moor Cut on the right is permanently dry. Under the baseline plan, York Stream will be restored and enlarged, the flow from the north will be increased, and Moor Cut will be filled with water to create a navigable ring two kilometres long around the town centre. Water levels below Green Lane won't change, so no impact is expected on Bray Meadows Triple SI or Braywick Park Nature Reserve. The planning application is supported by a full environmental impact assessment with a range of ecological surveys and studies, including a flood risk assessment on which the Environment Agency has advised. The plans are not forecast to increase flood risk. On the contrary, the channel enlargements to allow navigation will slightly reduce the risk of flooding. We start our tour at Green Lane, the southernmost part of the ring, where a lock, weir, boat rollers and fish pass will be installed. Behind us is the Bray Cup Channel, which runs downstream for three kilometres before rejoining the Thames at Bray. The cut is already quite large, typically over 12 metres wide and half a metre deep, with just a few pinch points. Setting off northwest towards the town centre, we travel up the shallow York Stream Channel. The Greenway path is high up on the left, but the steep banks restrict any views of the water. Despite the shallow water depth, which makes boating impractical today, York Stream and the adjoining channels are officially part of the River Thames and enjoy an irrevocable right of public navigation. The narrow channel will be widened at this point, while the weir at Green Lane will lift water levels to create a stable 1.3 metre deep and 7 metre wide two-way channel. Approaching Stafferton Way, the underlying channel widens out, but the active stream occupies just one third of the bed, with deep silt banks on either side. The silt will be removed, and the uplift from the weir will again increase water depth to 1.3 metres across the full channel width. Silt under Stafferton Way Bridge narrows the channel. It will be removed under the baseline plan, but neither Stafferton Way nor any other road bridge around the ring will be rebuilt or lifted simply to increase headroom. The restored waterway will therefore only support small boats, such as canoes, punts, rowing boats and open motor launches. We continue northwards towards Brunel's Great Western Railway, which cuts across both the route and the town. Four attractive brick arches span the waterway here, the middle two with a shallow stream. The Greenway footpath passes through the last tunnel on the right. Passing through the tunnels, we head closer into town, where the channel again widens out, although the stream itself remains very narrow, with silt banks on either side. The silt will be removed and the bed of the channel lowered from here northwards under the baseline plan. In combination with the uplift from the weir, this will establish a 1.3 metre deep and 7 metre wide waterway within the existing banks. Continuing northwards, we approach York Road, where the King George Social Club occupies the left bank. A small weir under the bridge will be removed, as the higher Green Lane weir replaces its probable function of holding up water levels in the town centre. Upstream of York Road, we pass Maidenhead Library on the left and head towards the historic Chapel Arches area. In the 1800s, the original St Mary's Chapel, after which the bridge is named, stood in the middle of the road just in front of the Bear Hotel. Studs in the pavement mark the outline of the original church, while a blue plaque on the bridge records that it was rebuilt in 1825. Opinions vary as to whether or not the old waterway was ever truly navigable, but as these images clearly show, there was once a large body of water in the town centre. The top image is a watercolour from 1805, before the colonnade buildings were added to the bridge. 
It shows a wide channel to the north of Chapel Arches, with St Mary's Chapel in the background. The lower image is an 1823 painting by William Pocock, showing St Ives Lake to the south of Chapel Arches, with the old York Road Bridge in the foreground. Under the baseline plan, the footbridge will be removed and the channel width more than doubled in size to make chapel arches a key feature of the town centre. Only one of the three large arches today carries water, so we propose opening up and filling a second arch with water to maximise the visual impact. The channel curvature will also be improved to allow boats to pass easily through the tunnel beneath the colonnade. A public walkway, down to the Greenway, plus a cafe and open terrace, are envisaged here under the approved plans for the former cinema site. Passing through the open tunnel, we emerge behind the colonnade into Crown Lane. Here the channel is narrow and hemmed in by Hines Meadow Car Park on the left and the La Roche Sports Centre on the right. The ramp will be removed to widen the channel and the footpath will be rerouted. We continue northwards to pass under the A4 dual carriageway, saint Cloud Way. The pathways here and under the exit from the car park are prone to flooding and will be protected under our plans. With limited space available, the waterway here will be one way before widening out again to the north of the A4. As we reach Town Moor, we turn around to head south again towards the town centre. This time we pass down the dry, more cut eastern channel, which was enlarged in the 1960s as part of the town's flood defences. This flood roll has since been overtaken by the much larger Jubilee River scheme. This created a bund and control structure to the north of Maidenhead, which today restricts the flow into the town centre channels. Crossing Town Moor in the dry channel, we again approach the A4 dual carriageway. On the right-hand side, you can see the recently exposed lettering on the channel wall beside the police station car park. It marks the presence of Grace's Yard, a builder's merchant which operated here until the 1970s at Willow Wharf. Under the baseline plan, Moor Cut will be permanently filled with water to create the waterway ring and deepened to 1.3 metres to allow boating by small craft. The empty channel is over 12 metres wide today, but will be narrowed slightly as spoil from excavation is used to build up a new public towpath on the left-hand side. The channel under the A4 is filled with rubble and other debris, but we soon arrive at the attractive balustraded Moorbridge Road Bridge, which adjoins Waitrose's car park. Originally part of the A4 London to Bath coaching route, the bridge today stands proudly over a shallow, stagnant and litter-filled pond. The channel here will be deepened and the water level raised to create an attractive waterside area that everyone can enjoy. As we exit from under Moor Bridge, the channel rises to become dry again. Heading southwards within Moor Cut, we pass between the Waldeck Road office park on the left-hand side and, on the right, the back gardens of First Cedars Road and then Langdale Close. There are a number of services lying in the channel here, which will be realigned as part of the works. This part of Moor Cut is currently hidden from view, has no public access, is empty and largely forgotten. Yet, the channel from here down to Green Lane is over 12 metres wide. The channel bed will be lowered, and with the uplift from the weir will continue the navigable channel towards Green Lane. Some of the spoil from the excavation will again be used to build up the left-hand bank to create a new public towpath within the channel banks, running down Moorcut to link with the Greenway path at Green Lane. As the channel bears to the right, Brunel's eastern railway tunnels come into view. Built in 1838 to carry the Great Western Railway, the four impressive brick arches are today hidden from public view. The large curved wings were added in the 1960s, when the channel was an important part of Maidenhead's flood defences. As the visualisation shows, the flood control wings will be removed, a towpath added on the left-hand side, and the channel filled to create another key location around the town ring. We pass through one of the two central tunnels, an impressive barrel vaulted structure which today is dry and largely unemployed, to emerge just above Forley's Road. Beneath the bridge lies another stagnant pond with accumulated debris. Despite the degraded habitat, wildlife still thrives along the hidden channels and will be protected and encouraged under our plans. As we exit from under Forley's Road, 
The channel is dry again for a short while before the bed starts to fall away and fills with water as we approach Green Lane. Finally, we leave the Eastern Channel just above Green Lane Bridge, a popular fishing spot where the Moorcut and York Stream channels rejoin and where we started our journey today. The visualisation shows how a lock and weir would be built here under the baseline plan to raise and hold water levels throughout the town centre ring. This concludes our tour of the route and our introduction to the baseline plan which is being designed to offer something for everyone including families, walkers, fishermen and nature lovers. We hope this presentation helps you to understand and share our vision of restoring the waterways into a major feature of a rejuvenated town centre.